On to the coronavirus, and it's now been uh, detected in every region of mainland China, but the Foreign Office has been unable to bring back 200 Brits from Wuhan today as planned. Well, the virus has spread to at least 16 countries, and the death toll has now risen to 170. Dr Zoe joins us now. So, so what's the latest on this? Should people here be beginning to worry? So, I mean, it's rising. The cases are rising. It's now 7,700 cases. 170 people have died. And 16 countries, we know that there are confirmed cases. Nobody's died outside of China, so it, it seems like, you know, this virus, to most people, if you're fit and healthy, is not going to kill you. It's not a deadly virus, but what's scary about it is its ability to transfer between one person and another. And what's particularly scary is that it seems as time goes on, it's transferring more easily. So, so it may be so that it's, it's mutating. Changing. It may be that it's mutating, so they're monitoring it very closely. Um, and, that's, and that's one of the things that's scary about it, is that it's so unpredictable. If you are healthy... Yes. Um, and, ..and don't have any other issues... Yes. ..then is it like the flu? Similar to the flu, probably not going to cause as severe illness as the flu. Um, it's likely to cause a dry cough and a fever. And then about a week later, that's when, if you're going to have breathing difficulties, they're likely to start. But they say about one in five cases could cause a severe illness. But essentially, people who are eligible for a free NHS flu vaccine are the same people who would be at risk if they got right, this virus. People with a weakened immune system, so they can't fight it off. And what, how are the numbers compared to, say, the ordinary flu every year? Yeah, so, I mean, 170 people have died in China from this. Half a million people die every year from the flu worldwide and 600 people here in the UK. So, actually, the question about should we be worried about it here in the UK, we should still be more worried as individuals about getting yeah. the flu. There's still no confirmed cases at all in the UK. So there was, um, obviously, this plane was booked to evacuate more than 200 British citizens. Yeah. Um, they weren't given permission for the flight to depart. What happens when they eventually do get back here to the UK? What happens to those passengers? So in order to protect all of us here in the UK, we have to assume that all of those 200 people, there's a risk that they're already infected. One of the other things that, that makes this particular virus likely to spread is that you can be contagious before the symptoms start. Right. So what we call the incubation period is the period of time that you're infected, but before you develop symptoms. And with this coronavirus, that could be up to 14 days. So when these people come back to the UK, they will be put in quarantine. So they'll go to a, a military base where they'll have health support, they'll have doctors, they'll have people to take care of them if they do get unwell. And if after 14 days they haven't developed symptoms and they've tested negative, then it's safe for them to I go back home. I mean, that's going to be a hellish 14 days for them, isn't it? It's not going to be pleasant, but we have to think about the bigger picture. Yeah, that's yeah, no, That's to protect I the whole of the country, mm. because if those people go home and even spread it to just one other person, that person does the school run. The other advice is for people who are coming from Wuhan or have already come here from Wuhan, they should put themselves into isolation, stay at home, for 14 days. And if those people develop symptoms, please don't go to hospital or to your GP surgery. Dial 111 and the help, if you need it, will come to you. Okay. So how do you stop it, other than, as you say, putting yourself into quarantine and then and not going to hospital? How, how do you stop it from spreading? So for Jose in the UK, because it's not here, we don't need to do anything except for those two, th that group that I've identified. It's really down to the government agencies. The World Health Organization are meeting again today. They're in meetings right now to decide whether they're going to make this a global disaster. Um, Which and in itself, if you hear that... It sounds terrifying. It sounds, it sounds terrifying. What that means is it enables all the different organisations across the world to come together. It means that it will generate more funding and, and more support and more resources to help tackle this. They met last Wednesday, last week, and they decided that actually, although it is a disaster, very much it is a disaster in China, it, at that time it wasn't a world disaster. So they'll, hopefully they'll let us know by the end of today whether they've upgraded it. Um, but really, the most important thing at the moment is what the Chinese officials have been doing by completely... Essentially, Wuhan has been in quarantine now for the past week, and because of that decision to do that, although it's awful for the people that are there, they've stopped the spread. So what's so dangerous about this is its ability to spread mm. and we don't want it to spread across the globe. So what can we do to protect ourselves here? I've seen you've got, a, you've got a mask here. I have a mask. So we'll see people in China, they're all wearing these around different countries, lots of people are wearing these. And we don't need to wear them here because there are no confirmed cases here. Um, but these do provide some protection 
but not complete protection. Um, people think that by, if people think that by wearing this, they're completely covered, they're not. What it will protect us from is what we call splash. So if somebody sneezes or coughs directly in your face, it'll protect you from those particles. And it also prevents us touching our face so often, because actually a lot of the time we get these viruses because we touch surfaces mm. and then we touch our face. On average, we touch our face 23 times an hour, but actually they don't protect our eyes. So if we touch our eyes, we can get it. Um, and they have gaps, you know, and they don't have air filters. So although people are wearing these, you know, we don't need to wear them here. And um, for those people wearing them abroad, the people in China are using all sorts of contraptions and devices now to try and protect themselves mm. because they've run out of masks. People have got big plastic bottles. People have got some images. Oh my God. People have got big plastic bags. So they're doing, you know, they're doing what they can. But, you know, these things aren't going to give 100% protection. Oh, my God. That's so scary. It's really sad, isn't it? Yeah. It's really sad. Thank you. So <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you very you. much. I'm sure we'll thank talk you. about it yeah. again.